Uh, the internet. It's where we get our news, real or fake, check our emails and watch our cat videos. It's hard to imagine what our life would be like without it. Hey everyone, welcome to Little Art Talks. My name is Karen. Welcome to another episode of 5 and 5 where I discuss 5 artists in 5 minutes, all dealing with the marvelous home to our favorite videos, gifts, and pics, the internet. Jodi or Jodi.org is a collective of two artists, Jones Heemskirk and Dirk Paismans, who began to create work on the World Wide Web in the mid-1990s. The duo pioneered the medium by creating websites that were intentionally distracting, introducing glitches into iconic video games, and collecting YouTube videos of consumers destroying high-end tech products. Their website, Jodi.org, is an intricate web of text patterns and interactive graphics written out in basic HTML. Like a maze, one can click on links to navigate the website. They mess with the viewer with distracting blinking and dead ends. I would suggest you stay away if you're epileptic. Eva and Franco Matz are a duo based in New York, operating under the pseudonym 01001011110. They're considered among the second wave of internet artists. In 1998 to 2000, they created a fictional artist, Darko Maver. By the power of rumors, they created an intricate hoax that unfolded for two years. They convinced not only their colleagues, but also mainstream media. The backstory, published on a website, chronicled the character of a tortured artist who produced increasingly violent figure sculptures while wandering homeless around Yugoslavia. These works even made their way into the Venice Biennial, fueling the interest in this character. It wasn't until 2000, after Maver supposedly died in prison, that the story was revealed as a fabrication. By the way, if there's any Black Mirror fans out there, you might be reminded of the National Anthem episode, which dealt with the power of instant mass communication. Ai Weiwei is a contemporary Chinese artist who's known for his open critique of the Chinese government on their stance on human rights and democracy. Ai Weiwei has struggled with censorship since 2005 when he began to blog on Sina Weibo, the largest internet platform in China. The blog was shut down in 2009 due to his outspoken commentary and popularity. He then turned to Twitter where he wrote prolifically, claiming at least 8 hours a day. As of December 31st, 2013, Ai Weiwei stated that he would stop tweeting, but his account is still active through retweets and Instagram posts. After alleged economic crimes, Ai Weiwei has been unable to leave China, but continues to exhibit outside of China through others. Petra Courtright is an internet and post-internet artist based in Los Angeles. Webcam was a video originally published on YouTube in 2007. In it, Courtright gazes into the webcam where she sees an image of herself amongst random computer-generated objects. Anonymous visitors stumble across the video determined by keywords and YouTube's algorithm based on views. The video highlights the conditions of watching a video online and mirrors that passive consumption of content of the viewer while watching the work, rendering the viewer as both producer and subject. On December 10th, 2011, the video was removed due to her extensive use of offensive keywords. The last artist I want to talk about is Parker Ito. Interestingly, he said that I'm not an internet artist, I'm just a hipster on the internet who makes art. While still a student at the California College of Arts in Oakland, he created a series of paintings of the parked domain girl. It uses the image of a smiling blonde co-ed wearing a backpack, a photograph that appears as a placeholder on countless unconstructed web addresses across the internet. These websites are intended to bring in advertising revenue when a user mistypes their intended web destinations or click on incorrect links. The stock image, which was posted on iStockPhoto.com as Attractive Student, was used by Ito who hired a Chinese company to reproduce the stock photo image in oil. He would then paint and manipulate the reproductions and then ordered the company to reproduce them again. He also placed them on the internet, making its way around and inviting others to join in. Critic Jean McHugh compares the subject to Marilyn Monroe, both icons of emptiness. While Monroe was a blank slate for sexual desire, the park domain girl was a symbol of sites without content. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more, there will be a link in the description bar below to a playlist that contains all the previous videos that I've done in this 5 artists and 5 minutes format. They come out every single Sunday, so please subscribe to catch them all. Special thanks to our Patreon supporter, I really appreciate your contribution. If you like Little Art Talks and you want to help keep making great new videos, you can check out patreon.com slash littlearttalks to see all the neat things that are available. And I'll see you guys next time.